Let's take a look at the first page of Wishing and Hoping by Bacharach, as arranged by Kevrin. Uh, and right away, the intro sounds like this. Two. One. Two. Okay, I wasn't ready, but it kind of has these offbeat falling perfect fifths in the bass, and then that thing that I screwed up. And the right hand comes in, kind of like a horn solo of some kind. 1-5 um, is a nice idea because obviously it's the same pattern over and over. What I don't like about it is I have to hop all the time. And while I want to give across that I, um, sense of hopping as opposed to hoping uh, in my, in my right, uh, left hand, um, I, I, I kind of want to not feel like I'm having to do it with my fingers in the left hand. So my solution is actually this. One followed by a three. And I want to hold on to the first finger throughout. So I'll have the thumb stretched out to cover G at all times. While my longer fingers do little adjustments here and there. Right, so that, that's my idea to use mostly twos and keep one on that G. I just find it a lot more secure when it comes to playing this passage. All right, but at least in the right hand, it's pretty straightforward. What's important about this music is obviously to keep a very, very steady beat. It doesn't have to be fast, but it has to be steady. So one, two, three, four. And then when you are done with the final note of that last note in the first measure, this is where you're practicing this very rapid extension. There it is. So I'll highlight it red. Three, four. And then before I say one for the following measure, Right, so I might say one. Of course, it looks like a finger number, so I'm not going to put it in. Let's draw it in. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Extend. One, two, three, and then have to position back. It's still a bit of work, but it's not as much work as doing shift, shift, shift. Here you're having to shift all the time. At least here I just adjust slightly my two and five. Three, two, three, four, one. Right. Oh, what am I doing? Don't, do not do anything here. So at yellow, don't do anything. <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Don't do anything. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. So again, maybe not that. Let's keep going. So you have that left hand, uh, right hand coming up. The left hand jumps up an octave, as you're about to see. But the the right hand also has to sh shift position. So right here, we have to do this, roughly speaking. And in the left hand, we have to do this, roughly speaking, right? So to be ready for the second line, we need to be right here. Again, I'm basically copying the fingers from above to all that good stuff. All right, same stuff in the left hand, just up an octave. In the right hand, It's a tricky thing, a double stop, or I should say double note, uh, double note, yeah, two note in at, at an interval in the right hand with a tenuto and a staccato. So when you're striking staccato, you're not really fully releasing this tenuto before that. You're holding it down, and as, as it starts to come up, you repress it. And then after you repress it, you jump out. Well, I'm not doing that, I'm just lifting my fingers. And look, I'm staying in position at all times. Hold, release. Now 
Now this is a hard one. Maybe. Maybe we should get away from that editorial 5-3 that sets us up for a very nice position, but 5 and 3 are so weak. We could do this. Yeah. And of course that means here we will play 1 and 3. That does force us to use 1 and 2 here, meaning we have to shift the thumb right here. But, I'll highlight it with red again. But, I think that's still a better idea. Because... When you get to that 3 note chord at the end of the line, you don't have to do anything different. The 5 is already on F, right? So I like it a little more than that editorial 3-5 suggestion. So again, see, see what you think yourselves, ask questions in the comments, but I think it's better. Uh, actually, this is a 1-3. Yeah. Right, it kind of eliminates needing to move from a 2-4 to a 1-3 on the same two notes, B and D. I like that solution for the right hand a lot more myself. Uh, and then I don't know what to do with my left hand. But that thing that I just demonstrated takes a lot of coordination. So again, take time to practice my favorite way backwards so that you're always checking your position preparation. At the end of the line, let's, I don't know, call it um orange yeah my left uh, my left hand is actually here and i'm going to move there way ahead of time right over here all right so when i'm checking my hand positions at the orange highlight boom that's what i want to see basically an f major chord position i'm holding on onto the uh, long a c f in the right hand and I'm getting ready to, to go C, that kind of slide figure in the left hand. So I stop there and I check. Easy. My, my right hand just strikes the, the chords in the same position. I'm holding that tenuto and then doing the staccato chords and back to the tenuto half note. Pretty easy to understand, but still do that. You're holding the tenuto, then staccato. Hold, give me a second. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see. We have this thing, we have this thing. And then let's use that blue line again. This is where it gets interesting because you're right here at the blue line and you're about to do this. Right? You might as well just practice the leap. Because once you nail it, everything is the same. Right? The rest of the... What, what's coming up, you've just practiced, which is why I love this backward step in method so much. You know what you're about to do. You always know where you're going. So all you have to figure it out is how to get there. And that can sometimes take some, some practice, but... It usually doesn't take too much work as long as you're not trying to solve every single problem in the same time. Right, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just leaping from here and try to do it as quickly as possible and without looking because that teaches your body to trust its, what is this thing called again, prior perception where you feel, you know, the space with your body as opposed to using your eyes. Anyway, pro prior Per, per, anyway, you can correct me in the comments. Right, so I'm doing that. And then once I've nailed that jump, easy. I can go all the way to that brown highlight. But um, let's put a yellow highlight right here. No, that's still brown. Let's put a yellow highlight right here. And that would be us doing this and stopping. And so now I'm backing up from here. Um, using the blue here. So I'm actually going to use the second finger as we discussed. Right?
right? That's, that's the one where you really have to work. Right, that between the blue line, the, the thin indigo, and, and the yellow, this is where suddenly things, things get very technical. But a couple of practices, a couple of attempts should feel a little easier. Following day, things get easier still. Just go through the same set of motions so you can refresh these brain pathways until it becomes more automated. All right, so let's go to here. Okay. So from this blue line, I'm on three, I'm two and four, as, as you can see from the beginning of this line, using two, four, one, three, and I see now I'm not doing the, the oh, what do you call it, I think, tenuto. Now I'm not doing so. Once there are too many difficulties and the brain just cannot control it, stop where the first difficulty occurs. For example, right here on let's call it green. Yeah, I need to make sure that's a tenuto, not a staccato. So all I'm doing is this I'm on my blue. In fact, let's do this uh, one more time here. And here's my blue holding those two, uh, three notes. At the blue line just kind of feeling where they are and then all I want to do is this hold the tenuto then be on G staccato first then tenuto again hold the G hold the blue line Okay, so that, that allows me to focus on where the problem is. If I'm overwhelmed and th there are too many things for my brain to control, I want to reduce my segment until I am in control. I don't want to feel stressed. I don't want to feel nervous when I practice because this is when I'm solving the problems, not creating them. Right, that's it. Okay, so then from I know from the green highlight I can probably make it. That I might not land correctly, but I can make sure I, I did the jump. I'm oh, sorry, but green. Okay, better, right? But always knowing where, where you stop helps you to focus. Okay, so that's good enough for, um, for the opening. Let's go to the next line. Here it is. What is this thing? of lots happening um, let's look at the very end first and then it can continue similarly on the last line of this page um, five. I would use four and I'll explain why if you look at the last line it there is that chord one, three, five, which means finger five is on C. Yeah, so highlighted yellow. Uh, and that means that finger four is on B, which means I could put finger four on B right here. Yeah, what's highlighted orange. Uh, and like this. So four, right there. I don't need to do anything. If I use four on B, retroactively, it means I want to put two on G, not that editorial suggestion of a three. There it is. Which means from this chord, let's highlight it green, I want to leap like a crazy person all the way down to here. Right. Don't don't wait to leap. If it's a it's going to be a pretty. This marking is often interpreted as a as a short sharp staccato, right? Use that as your leaping point. Something like this. I, I can't land right, but you you leap right away. So two, three, four with a one on E in the in the right hand. In the left hand, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. 
option in the left hand is where you see me adding those fingers. No, that's not the right one. Here. Maybe that, because that's a stronger pair of fingers in 3 and 5. Right, so you have this shape, and then later where you cannot see, you see that shape. I, I, would, I would probably do something like this myself. So, 4 two, one 4 two, one all right, so that takes care of the end of this line. And I'm holding this what green highlighted chord, and then I'm practicing this leap. So if I were to mark it in the score, it kind of looks like this. It really has to be fast. It, you feel a snap towards your rib cage. something like this right so make sure you're in position because then you know you can play the rest of this line so lead, coming into the green highlight you will be holding the G but not too long because uh, the pedal right that's the, the effect da -dee, da -dee, big loud whatever Maybe a little too fast right now. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make is G moves. I know it looks like a uh, half note, like you have to hold it, but pedal. So don't. There it is. So probably as you strike the D or something like that, you want to stop and check. Let's do the wonderful purple highlight. And same thing in the left hand. Right away. Let's per the uh, red highlight. All right, lots of highlights. So, uh, green is that. Green is super fast. Right? Now, purple, you're holding the D, you're already in position in the right hand for the green. Uh, and the pedal is down. And you release as you strike that. Prong. I'm really working my left hand fingers hard, right? They're in position. Especially the fifth finger. I'm not collapsing. I'm not kind of doing that sort of thing. I'm making sure every single finger comes down literally stop on your fifth finger and make sure that that's what your hand looks like you can't really see it I don't know why my um, other side keyboard camera is not working but um, right it's that shape there maybe easier to see up here rather than this shape and then as soon as you make it you go like that. So a lot to coordinate, a lot to work in just those couple of beats. Oh, <laughs> what about my right hand? There it is. Very, very physical, I won't deny it. All right, uh, let's use that gr uh, blue thin line. G. In position to play the left hand, not playing yet, the pedal is down. So I know where I'm starting from, very important. About to do the leap in the right hand. And then another leap. See, that's difficult. Two leaps, one right of the other. So practice in isolation from purple to green, and then from that thin line, and eventually the red line, the red highlight, to purple, right? Split up the difficulty in two parts. Right? There it is. That's all I'm doing. Okay, maybe I can do up to D. So I know I've pressed my first note of the group in the left hand. Right, there is my G. There it is. Pedal is down. Boom. Or holding the G, pedal is down. Making sure I can do it. All right, let's move the blue line to something like 
this. So holding this, finger four on A, uh, whatever fingers, I guess one and three. Pedal is down. Right, again, problem. Big leap in the left hand, another big leap following in the right hand. I might want to break things down. So let's see, pink. I'll just stop on pink and check. One more time. Right, notice, I'm making sure that I only have to worry about one position change, not a bunch. Good. So these motions are important. We need to make sure they're happening. It's a very good idea not to pile them up on top of one another when you're first practicing and figuring them out. And then going back to, I don't know, here. It's a little clunky because you're overlapping the, th overlapping the thumbs. But again, let's do that. Bring in the pink. Stopping and checking. All right, let's do the last line and be done for today. All right, so we talked about the fingerings leading into this yellow highlight. Very difficult leap. This is a very leapy piece. Like that. So that's the first position. And then after this F, another five finger position. Uh, one, two, one, two, three. Right, again, there's no real reason to play through all the notes of bar 13. Yeah, so instead, start at, let's make an indigo. Sorry, let's do it right here. Right on the bar line. That's the position, I feel it. I'm not playing anything, I'm just feeling it. Now, from, let's do green. That's all I'm doing, I'm, I'm here, right? And now I'm here. Because if I can do this, I'm good, I'm set. All right, so once you've practiced into this indigo, let's look at the next measure. Let's label it cyan. That's what you want to be doing right now. From F you leap. Tricky but doable after a few tries. Again, has to be just the one thing. You cannot do a word like uh, like you're trying to do everything and you're slowing down and you're just all over the place. Focus on one thing only, get it perfect. That's it. I, I tried to do the cyan, I managed to do it okay, I can move on. Here, I would recommend moving the, the right hand right at the end of the bar line. Don't hold all the way to the end. So by the time you've pl played the last note in the left hand, you're moving to something like, hmm. Huh. Yeah, I think 5-3 is fair. I would just recommend maybe that idea from earlier where you use a 3 here and a 4-2 here so that you can use stronger fingers. Delete all of this. One, three. Yeah, I think that's easier. Right? Because that's exactly what we were doing up above on this page. So as you slide into C, you want to slide the third finger over onto D right away, right here. And that's where you stop. So let's do another, like, I don't know, 
orange. With this orange, we're stopping to check that 3 is on D. But not just 3 on D, also 4 on E and 2 on C, sharing with 1. And then back to those tenuto staccatos, tricky ones. And we're back in the basically intro material in, in both hands. So I, I've done that before. Um, yeah, so in the left hand, make sure you're doing this. Yeah, so um, where is this? Circle it. Put it in the fingerings I've decided on already. up here, right, from up above. All right. Come on. So, practice the last measure. You don't have to change positions at all, but because of the tenuto staccato difficulty, it might be useful to only go up to this, let's say, red, hold the tenuto, hold it, hold it, hold it, then go back to this, and then hold the tenuto, then go back to this, and you're holding, and now you're doing staccato followed by tenuto. Do it a couple of times. Holding the G, holding the uh, blue indigo, and stopping on that red highlight, and then maybe doing this. So now I have to do two staccatos. There it is. Do it a couple of times. Perfect. And then finally, maybe beginning of this measure, you're holding the tenuto, three staccatos always stopping on that tenuto. So yeah, sometimes the difficulty is not because you have this rapid position shift like you have in other measures, but it's really about um, articulation or rhythms. Yeah, so these things can be tricky as well. All right, any questions, write them in the comments. And in the meanwhile, goodbye.